Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to talk tonight um, about a new freedom. We were talking about last week. Were we last week? <laughs> what are we talking about? A new hope. We were talking about a new song. Um, and we were talking about a new spirit and a new desire. But before we get into that, we'll go ahead and take some prayer requests. Anyone? Prayer requests? Uh, For everybody that's sick. Yeah, we we'll still have a few folks sick. Uh, people dealing with flu, COVID. Um, Sister uh, Jean, I know she had some things going on tonight with some sickness, so we just lift these folks up. So if you want to just lift your voice, lift your hands. Lift these folks up in prayer in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bless you and exalt you. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your peace. We thank you for your word that is alive. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we have access to you, that we can enter into your courts and into your gates with praise and thanksgiving. Lord, we exalt you and magnify you, Lord. We need your grace tonight, Lord, because we cannot do this on our own. We can't We can't forgive you, we can't forgive ourselves, and we can't forgive others without your grace. We need this grace tonight, Lord, to be able to let go of bitterness, that we will not harbor bitterness, that we will not hold on to grudges, that we will let go of anger, that we will let go of any resentment in Jesus' name. Lord, would you forgive me of sin in my life? Would you forgive me of iniquity? Would you forgive me of idolatry? And we ask, Lord, that you would dispatch angels to go forth to bless and to encourage those in this earth tonight, Lord. Bless those that are feeling sick tonight in their bodies, Lord. We bind up the flu. We bind up COVID. We bind up the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that they would be healed, that they would be made whole according to your will, according to their faith, that they would be whole right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over the body of Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus over our, our marriages and our homes and our finances tonight and our health in the name of Jesus, Lord, and that we lose the spirit of faith, that we would have faith in you for the impossible, that we would have faith in you tonight, Lord, for the miraculous and the wonderful name of Jesus. We ask that you would bless us with your word tonight, Lord, and that you would help us that we would receive and accept your word, that we would apply your word to our lives, Lord, and that the word of God would bear good fruit within each and every one of us. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. God is good. And I forgot my cheaters, so I will be wearing... My wife's cheaters tonight. <laughs> Praise God. How do I look? Do I look fabulous? Yes. <laughs> so like I said, we're going to talk about a new freedom. So let me go ahead and um, let me just read something that's... Uh, criminal record can create down or difficult downstream consequences. Anybody out there with criminal records in the house tonight? Uh, yes, I'm one of those that has a, a past. <laughs> But, for example, employers and then landlords commonly ask job applicants and apartment seekers whether they have ever been convicted of a criminal offense. The good news is that in some cases you may be able to get an arrest or conviction expunged from your record. An expungement uh, refers to the process of sealing arrest and conviction records. So, in the U.S. legal system, sometimes individuals can have their past criminal records sealed or expunged, hiding the existence of of certain former arrests or convictions, whether or not, and these are some tem uh, terms that my wife is kind of well versed in, you know, some of her family members. <laughs> not for my wife, but some family members. Um, whether or not it's a good or fair aspect of legal practices, some convicted criminals have been able to utilize this procedure. However, the best possible practice of expunging past records is available only through justification when God clears our record of a sinful past. And those of us that are in this house, we can all say amen to that. Um, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines justification as the act, process, or state of being justified by God. The same resource defines justify as to prove or to show to be just, right, or reasonable. Justification is a complex theological concept but perhaps we can understand it best by the simple idea someone once offered. Someone once offered. Justification is just as if I had never sinned. And that's, I mean, that's pretty powerful. So God can do that. He's the one that can justify. He's the one that does, uh, just, does the justification in our lives. It's as if God has expunged the record of all our sins. So freedom from the past. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 reads, 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's what it is. You know, when we talk about getting baptized in the name of Jesus, we bury that old man. We bury that old sinful nature. We come up out of that water. We come out of the water, a new creature in Christ. And all things are new. It's like we, you know, like I said, we, uh, it's almost like we've never sinned before because he wipes that, wipes us clean. He wipes that slate clean. So the new life av available through Je uh, wow, I'm really tongue-tied tonight. The new life available through Jesus Christ, first of all, frees us from our sinful past. So we're free from that sinful past. The old life has passed away, and all things are become new. The first order of business for new believers is that God deals with our past, our past sins, forgives them, and banishes all their sins. In human terms, God forgets our sins. Like I said, we, you know, he talked about how he. he takes our sin and he just throws it behind him. He, just, he doesn't focus on that anymore. He, he says he forgets it. Right. Um, so he forgives. You know, we need to, if, you know, we, what's that saying? You know, I'll, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. We, and, um, so we need to, some, I think we could ask the Lord maybe to help us to forget some things. You know, some people that sinned against us maybe. Yes. You know, we need to be able to forgive, but we, you know, I believe that God can help us with that to where, right. so we don't have that remembrance of something to where now we're holding a grudge, right. we're harboring bitterness, right. you know, because he can help us, you know, it's by his grace that we we can, you know, that we would not harbor bitterness, it's by his grace that we would not hold a grudge, and it's, right. you know, by his grace that we would let go of anger and resentment, that we would not, you know, uh, you know, keep those ill thoughts towards somebody. Freedom to become children of God. John 8, 31 through 36 says, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is the second time I've seen this today. I've seen it somewhere else. But the, the way that these other people were using this, it wasn't talking about Jesus. We know that it was, this is talking about Jesus making us free. Yeah. Uh, they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? He shall be made free. Jesus answered them, Verily, 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 I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. And that is the only way that we have true freedom, you know, that freedom. Right. Uh, because Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he, he is what makes us free. So that we can have that victory over sin. So we can, like I said, you know, going back to harboring bitterness. Because it's very hard, or it's very easy for us to harbor bitterness towards other people. Yes. It's, it's very, strange. you know, we can harbor that bitterness. And whether the bitterness is just going to eat us, it's just right. going to kill us. Right. After freeing us from our past lives of sinful guilt and shame, God makes us his sons and daughters and frees us to inherit and enjoy the full benefits of being his children. The truth sets us free through Jesus Christ by his redemptive work in our lives. When Jesus made his dec declaration to the Jews in John 8, they were puzzled. They did not consider themselves servants at all, and they did not think they needed to be freed from servitude. And that, you know, we, we're bound by sin, we're bound by addiction. We don't think, you know, we don't think that we're bound. We think that we're free, and we're doing, we, we have the freedom to do what we want, but no, we're being controlled you know, like the drug addiction. We're being controlled by the, that addiction. Right. We, we're, we're not in control. If we're an alcoholic, we're not in control of things. We're bound by that sin. We're bound by that um, uh, addiction. addiction. Yes. Right. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus' response to them is both telling and instructive for all today who desire salvation. Jesus said, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Whosoever. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what we think we are. If we think we're in control, we're not. We're the servant to that sin. Individuals who live in sin are living in bondage. They are servants to sin and the carnality of their sinful nature. They need freedom from sin before they can ascend to being sons or daughters of God. Many people struggle under the bondage of sin. Right here I did. You know, the addiction to drugs and alcohol and, and cigarettes. Um. Perhaps spiritual servitude is stronger than today than ever before with individuals struggling under the influence of habits, idolatrous behaviors, and physical addictions. 
The only hope for those bound by sin is to be delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. There's power in his name. There's power in the blood. There's freedom in his name. There's victory in his name. There's healing in his name. There's salvation in his name. And he will free individuals from sin, servitude, and make them true sons of God. John, amen. John 1 and 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. And we've got to believe. And, you know, believing that he is God. And believing that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. Believing that he can heal us. Believing that he can deliver us and set us free. All things are possible to those that believe. Right. Amen. And with him, there's nothing that's impossible. Amen. You know, with, with God, everything is possible. He's able to do everything. He... He's a, he's willing he is willing and able to do the miraculous in our lives. Romans six one through thirteen is a little bit lengthy. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And we you know it's the grace of God you know that's at work in our lives, but that we can't we can't take advantage, try to take advantage of that. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried, buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So that old man, like I said, that we bury that old man, that, and that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And he's the only one that can break those chains of bondage. Right. You know, I can't do anything, you know, that's going to break it. But surrender to him. But have faith in him and yield to him. And, and like I said, here, receive him and trust in him and lean on him. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that you should obey um that you should obey in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye member, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And thank God for his righteousness, because what does the Bible say about our righteousness? It's right. filthy rags. And that we can hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God. And that we can, you know, just let me talk about... Um, Lord, take this, this garment of heaviness from me, put upon me the, uh, a, a garment of praise, and no, I forgot where I was going. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and that we could be robed in his righteousness. Lord, you know, that could be part of our prayer life each day, Lord, that I would hunger and thirst after your righteousness, mm -hmm. that I would be robed in your righteousness, Lord, and that, um, so that we can have this new hope, and that we can have the freedom from the past, that we can have the freedom to become children of God. So, new hope. People through the ages have recognized both the power of hope and our human need for hope in life. Hopelessness causes individuals to do things they ordinarily would not do. Anybody ever felt hopeless? Yes. You just like, you just felt hopeless. And so it causes us to do things that we normally wouldn't do. The absence of hope has led, even led some desperate souls to suicide and the throwing away of God's precious gift of life. And that's what it is. You know, it was that hopelessness that I felt. Um, there's many people out there today that, you know, so many people that you're like, you th think they might have it together, and then all of a sudden you, see, you hear, you know, that they took their own lives or, or, or something happened. They did something crazy to where you're just like, that. But um, people are crying out. People are trying to reach out in any different different ways. And um, that's what it is, that absence of, absence of hope. hope. On the other hand, hope is the fuel or energy that keeps most people moving forward through lives that, often are imperfect and filled with challenging circumstances, determinedly believing life has for them better opportunities ahead. So in Him, you know, we can have that hope that no matter what we're facing, no matter what storm we might be facing, no matter what difficult season that we might be in, and we've been in difficult seasons, all of us, we've had those times where we felt like, oh no, what is, what's going to happen next? You know, what, you know, we've had those thoughts of like, what horrible thing can happen next in our lives, but you know what? Okay, Lord, 
I command every one of these thoughts, imaginations, and ideas to be taken captive to obey you. And my hope is in you. My faith is in you. You are, you are my salvation. Praise God. A man approached the Little League baseball game one afternoon. He asked a boy in the dugout what the score was. The boy responded, 18 to nothing. We're behind. And yeah, in a baseball game, that's pretty, that's pretty good score to be behind, 18 right. to nothing. Um, boy, said the spectator, I'll bet you're discouraged. Why should I be discouraged? Replied the little boy, we haven't even gotten up to bat yet. <laughs> That's pretty bad. First inning, and you're down 18 to nothing already. But, hey, like you, you can look at it like that to where, oh my gosh, we're just going to get crushed. We might as well throw in the towel and just give up now. But, hey, we haven't had our chance yet. We haven't had our shot yet. You know, and that's, we can look at things like that to where the, just trusting the Lord. Okay, Lord, order my steps. This step that I just took, it felt kind of crazy. Like, oh, all this stuff seems like it's coming upon me now. It feels like I'm... But let's just take another one with the Lord. Let's just trust Him. Let's just lean upon Him more. Instead of taking a step back and saying, I'm just going to lean on my own devices. Which, that's not going to not gonna help us out in any way. No. We've all been there too, right? Right. <laughs> salvation through Jesus Christ brings new hope into every believer's heart. Without salvation, we all were without hope, but through his redemptive work within us, he has given us great hope. We who had no hope have been given new hope through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 12 through 13 reads, That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And you want to talk about, you know, something that gives you hope is that blood that was shed on Calvary to where we can, we can plead that blood every day. I can plead the blood over my wife and kids when I, before I leave for work in the morning. I can plead the blood of Jesus, you know, over my coworkers before I even get there. I can plead the blood of Jesus over our health, over our minds, over our finances, whatever it might be. I can plead the blood and, you know, I can trust that there's power in the blood of Jesus. Right. You know, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Um, power in his word, his spoken word. We read his word. There's power in that. We receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We receive power. The hope we have in Christ strengthens us for our present needs. And it keeps us secure in our anticipation of the future. Hope for today. So we do have a hope for today. First, Jesus Christ gives us hope for today. People who come to salvation in Christ often bring lives that consist of broken dreams. Anybody ever had broken dreams? Yes. Broken dreams uh, consist of broken dreams, hopes, and desires. Some of them even bring broken bodies and broken health. Some of us have been in that situation, right. too. We've had broken health. We've had broken bodies. Um when they hear the life-changing changing message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they often are infused with the new hope they have not experienced for a long time, if ever. Suddenly they have a renewed sense that life is worth living, that there is a better life above and beyond their hopeless and mundane existence. And, you know, you see somebody that gets filled with the Holy Ghost. What are we talking about? We talk about, their, you know, and God help us that we... This shouldn't be a part of our daily lives. Where, you know, I got the gift of the Holy Ghost. I've been baptized in the name of Jesus. I've been covered by the blood of the Lamb of God. He has forgiven me of my sins. He has set me free. Why should I ever feel hopeless? Right. <clears throat> Claire Booth. I don't know who this person is, but here's a little, little uh, thing that Claire Booth said. There are no hopeless situations. There are only people who have grown hopeless about them. One of the tricks of the uh, of uh, Satan. One of the tricks of Satan. Tricks of Satan, yes. Yeah. To make you feel that way. Makes you feel hopeless, you know. Like, uh, like I said, the situation. Well, this, you know, this situation is hope. You know, how people say it a lot too. This is just hopeless. You know, I feel hope. You know, the situation is hopeless. And sometimes we just need to quit speaking things into existence too. Right. You know, it might be, the, the sky could be falling down, but you know what? God's still in control of that sky that's falling down. Amen. Right? I mean, 
the field might feel like the ground beneath our feet is crumbling, you know, below us. But you know what? God is still in control and has power over that ground that might be crumbling below us. Um, it might feel like the chains of bondage are just wrapping tighter around us, but He is still in control because He's allowed things to happen in our lives. He still has control and power over all things. His name, we can't forget that His name is above every other name. Right. And then everything is under His feet. In his letter to the believers in Rome, Paul wrote of the hope we receive through salvation. In Romans 15 and 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And you know, we may fill you with all joy and peace. And you know, talking about peace, I was just telling, talking to somebody today about the peace that, you know, um, I just always go back to the peace when Sam was in the hospital. Just that time where, you know, it was, talk about lives that were in just complete chaos. I mean, me and my wife and, you know, all, you know going back and forth to the hospital and Bree just kind of being shuffled every, everywhere and this and that and <laughs> having, you know, but just the, the peace that God gave. I mean, I would assume that everybody else, hopefully, I don't know if y'all felt that same peace or not, but I, there, I had such a peace. And I, there was only no, there was no other source for that peace but him. Right. Because of everything going on around us, there was, yeah. You can't, in that situation, I just don't know how people get by, get through things without leaning on him and trusting in him. Because I, I couldn't find that peace in anything else. No. I couldn't find that peace in anyone else. Right. And then the joy even. You know, even there was even times where joy, there was joy because of him in situations that we're in. We're just like, well, how can you have joy in these in a situation like that because of him? Right. It's just, you know, you can't explain it. it. Doesn't it doesn't make sense to us? Further, Paul's language indicated that through the power of the Spirit, believers can abound in hope, experiencing hope in abundance. Salvation does not inoculate believers from suffering the hurts, pains, and trials of life. Believers sometimes lose their jobs, bury their loved ones, struggle with wayward children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> struggle with wayward children and suffer sickness, disease, and death. These things happen in life. But the hope Jesus Christ gives to us through redemptive bolsters are through redemption bolsters our faith, it comforts our hurts and disappointments, and eases our sense of suffering. Hope gives us purpose, strength, and power for our daily Christian lives. So we'll just lean on Him and trusting in Him and, and having our hope in Him and understanding, once again, just understanding that He, he has allowed certain things to come to be in our lives at, at a time. Mm -hmm. And going, just going back to Job, I mean, look, how, look at... Look at Job's, everything that happened in Job's life to where the Lord just allowed the enemy. So the Lord's just allowing different things. He's allowing the enemy to, to do so much. He's allowing the seasons to change. He's allowing, you know, whatever it might be. But i got to just remember, okay, Lord, you're in control of this. You're allowing this to happen for me. And, and in this hurt and in this pain and in this suffering and in this trial that I can still have hope and I still can't have peace. And I still can't have joy, your joy, full within me. And I can't have a relationship with you. And I can lean on, I can have that relationship. I can have that, that closeness. I can have that intimacy with the one who is in control of all this stuff. Yes, I mean, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty powerful. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Praise God. Um, hope for tomorrow. 1 Corinthians 15, I can see when I'm talking with my hands so much lately anymore. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. If in this life only we have a hope in Christ, we are all of all men most miserable. Paul also observed the vital role Christian hope plays in a believer's future. He acknowledged it is possible to have hope in Christ that is anchored to and limited to only this present life. But such a measure of hope is inadequate. If our Christian hope is centered only on this life and human activities, we will be miserable. Paul was recognizing the value of a hope that is anchored in our future and eternal destiny in Christ. And that's another thing, too, just 
recognizing, you know what, I'm just a pilgrim. I'm not, this is not, I'm, you know, I'm not from here. This is not my, you know, I'm just passing by, I'm just passing through. We have a future worthy of life and sac sacrifice and eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. There is a danger in becoming too attached to this present life. You know, we hear some people say, I'm not ready to go yet because I haven't done this, or I haven't experienced that, or I haven't, you know, I haven't seen my grandkids, or, I, you know, whatever it might be, but, <sighs> what's, you know... <laughs> When it comes your time. Yeah, when, you know, when it comes your time. Yes, exactly. Before Christians were blessed with much in the way of material wealth and possessions, the worship songs they sang typically focused on heaven and the glory of eternity with Christ. However, now it seems there are a few songs that focus on heaven. Is it possible to become so comfortable with life on earth that our hope is not focused on our future in heaven? The Lord warned about the possible effect of materialism on the people of God. I mean, we can get caught up in it. Yeah. I mean, Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 12, and it shall be with and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. And houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You know, I look back sometimes at like uh, when we first got married and before we had kids and, you know, the job that I had and you know, wasn't making a lot of money, and we had, just had, when we first got married, we just had that little apartment, and didn't have fancy cars, but you know what? We had God, and that was the most important thing, Yes. and he's brought us such a, a long way and blessed us beyond measure, beyond, you know, it just blows my mind sometimes, and you know, help us, Lord, that we don't get lost in these things, yeah. but that we stay focused. You know, on him to work like it says, then beware lest thou forget the Lord. I don't want to forget him. I don't want to ever forget, you know, where my blessings come from, where where you know that he is my savior, that he is my heavenly father, that he is my provider. Um, and there's so many times at work I'm like, I can't do this job with but for your grace, Lord. I can't do anything without your grace. Whether we as believers have much of this world's goods or little. We can keep our hope securely anchored in our relationship with Jesus Christ. That hope can give us faith for the unseen and unknown challenges we will encounter in life, but it also can encourage us about the glorious future and eternity we are destined to enjoy with Jesus Christ in heaven. One last scripture. After I read this first paragraph. When individuals repent of their sins, are baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, and receive the Holy Spirit, they receive a brand new life and relationship with Jesus Christ. It is a life of many new things and experiences, but most of all, it is a secure life of hope and certainty as a child of God. Romans eight sixteen through 17 The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, Heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, there it is, we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Once again, that, that was Romans 8, 16 through 17. It's a comforting and encouraging feeling to experience absolute certainty in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Some people are insecure by nature, even with regard to their spiritual experiences. However, even insecure individuals can experience the certainty of redemption when they receive the Holy Ghost. There is something supernatural about receiving the Spirit that, translate in, that translates into a bold confidence about one's salvation in Christ. And we can be bold. We can be confident in Him. Yeah. You know, we can be bold to where... We can be bold, but not stupid. Right. <laughs> okay? We can be bold, but, you know, not stupid. You know, I don't have to be... I can be confident in Him, and I can be uh, have so much faith and hope in Him to where I don't have to be intimidated 
by people and spirits that I face and encounter in this world today. Right. I don't have to live in fear. All right. He, you know, I don't have to fear whether, you know, we talked about when COVID first hit, you know, so many, and people are still afraid of COVID, and people are afraid of this, and they're afraid of that. Now, we, we can be confident in him and be, not be stupid about things. He did give us common sense how to, you know, whatnot. So, I don't have to be fearful. Though. I don't have to fear what the enemy can do to me. I don't have to fear, you know, what man can do to me. Many years ago, some Christians sang a confident song about their relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, the chorus to the old hymn began with the words, I know I'm saved and I'm so glad about it. We do not have to experience uncertainty or insecurity about our salvation and new life in Christ Jesus. We can know or for certain we are saved in Him. And we can have a great hope for this life and for eternity. You know, even though we know that it's not once saved, always saved. You know, I'm still breathing. I'm still battling this flesh. Um, but I can't have hope that if I abide by his word, he's going to save me. He's going to take me home. So we can have, you know, that hope in that. But, um, so let's just pray for Sister Jean again. Uh, pray for her healing. Um, anybody else that comes to mind, if you don't mind just lifting up their name. To the Lord, I know that He knows it, but if you just want to speak it out, uh, maybe some coworkers that we have, or uh, and pray for we got that cold stretch coming up. Just praying for people's safety. You know, we got I don't know if I'm sure we have some church family members that are going to be traveling at Christmas time and New Year's and whatnot. So this is bring these things before the Lord tonight. Lord, did you have a prayer request, bro? No. No. Okay. Lord, we bless you and exalt you and we magnify your wonderful name tonight. Lord, we thank you for your word. Once again, we ask that you would allow us to help us, Lord, to receive and accept it. Help us to apply to our lives tonight, Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, we bring to you once again uh, uh, those that are battling with sickness, those that are battling with any type of infirmities tonight, Lord, that they would be healed, that they would be made whole according to your will, according to their faith in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would dispatch angels to go forth to minister unto them, to bless them, and to encourage them tonight, Lord. We ask for your protection, Lord, when we have this cold stretch coming up, these few days of cold temperatures. We pray for family members to be protected, Lord. Lord, we pray for our neighbors and our and our loved ones, Lord, to be protected in this time in the wonderful name of Jesus. We lift up those family, friends, and neighbors and our brothers and sisters in the Lord that might be traveling during this holiday season. We ask that you would keep your hand upon them that you would put your guardian and warning angels about them to keep them from every attack of the enemy, to keep them safe on any travels that they might be a part of in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, that we would uh, put you first above all things, Lord. Help us that we, that our hope in you would not, that our hope and faith in you would not fail, that our faith in you would not waver, Lord, and that we would lean on you and trust in you, Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus, that we would put you above all things, that we would put no other gods before you, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we would put away detestable things in the wonderful name of Jesus. And tonight, Lord, we ask that you would loose among us, Lord, a spirit of conviction of sin, so that the church, the backslider, and the lost, that we might repent in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as we feel convicted of sin in our lives, Lord, that we would draw near to you, Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus, and that we would ask you, Lord, for forgiveness of the sin that we have. And we ask for your deliverance in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless y'all. In Jesus' name.